Okay, the regular notice requirement of yes, the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act has been complied with and the adequate advance notice of this meeting was given at least 48 hours in advance. On March 16th, notice was mailed to the Courier Post. Notice was also posted on the bulletin boards located by the reception desk at the central office. And making a motion to open or for roll call? Roll call, roll call right? Roll call. Roll call. Okay. Sorry. Ms. Teresa Atwood, Ms. Catherine Blackshear. Excused. Mr. Jose Buito Bueno. Ms. Dorothy Barely. Present. Mr. Joshua Cole. Present. Ms. Taisha Manier. Present. Mr. Wasim Mohammed. Present. And Ms. Felicia Reyes Morton. Here. And Ms. Martha Wilson. Um, excused. At this time, my, Madam Vice President, we have a quorum. The time is 933. Flag salute. Flag salute. That's a salute to flag. Would I raise the for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I will come down to give the budget presentation, uh, which will be followed by the line item budget overview from our school business administrator, Karen Wills. Okay, so I want to give a high level snapshot of our budget and always important to couch it in the big picture of the systems change that are playing out in Camden and the conversation we certainly have every single month at our board meetings with Renaissance schools, enrollment, growing charter schools to a lesser extent, but also growing. And as families are making certain decisions and as we are implementing our policies, there is a financial ramification. And our approach has been to facilitate the growth of high quality schools thoughtfully and to not move too fast, so to speak, and end up in a position where we are making cuts that we believe would not be in the best interest of children. So I'm pleased to say that with this year's budget, we are once again in a position where with even with enrollment reductions with our traditional public schools, I do believe firmly that uh, our schools next year will be very well positioned to provide the resources and the supports our students deserve. So starting with, so our budget was submitted uh, earlier this month. And uh, again, we'll do a high level overview and then present some of the details um, once Karen comes up here. <clears throat> so the enrollment shifts obviously being uh, the macro driver uh, of funding allocations to schools. And if you notice here from 1415 to 1516, there was um, a fairly noticeable decline in the district enrollment, roughly 2,000 students. And then from last, uh, and then the, the following year, it was a, 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 a not as precipitous of a decline. And so what we see from this current year to the projected year next year is very similar from, as what you saw from 1516 to 1617. So a more modest uh, decline of district enrollment. Uh, and it is roughly, and these numbers are obviously projections and uh, won't be exactly right. Uh, but we are projecting right now that the district will have 890 fewer students with charters increasing by roughly 450 students and Renaissance schools by 550 students. And when I say that, there's still a lot that could play out. Uh, one key example would be the state's uh, decision to close or non-renew the Camden Community Charter School. So 750 students enrolled there. That school is appealing the decision, pending the outcome. If that closure does move forward, that's 750 students where we can't right this minute tell you exactly where they're going to re-enroll their student. And so we'll, we'll work with those families and uh, ensure that they, are, they, they know what options are available to them. Uh, and, and so that will have an impact on the overall funding allocation. This is a chart that I always think is really important to stress during budget season. And some of you may have seen this before. Uh, so on the left, this represents what you just saw for next year, the projected enrollment. So the district, roughly 6,000 students. Um, and, and you see the chart in Renaissance uh, distribution as well there. This represents the funding allocation. So even though the district uh, is projected to serve 40% of students in publicly funded schools, they're going to receive the majority of the funding. 53% of the funding will go to the district. 
And so charters, even though they're representing 36 percent uh, of the total students, their funding represents 25. Uh, and so this is to say that on a per student basis, the district is significantly higher funded. And that is the way the state law is written as far as how funding is allocated to charters and Renaissance schools. Renaissance schools receive slightly more than charters. So charters are at 12,800, Renaissance schools are at 17,600, and that is because Renaissance schools receive an allocation of the adjustment aid on top of the main state allocation, whereas charters do not receive any of the adjustment aid. Uh, and so this has always been the case, and I just really want to stress that because as the enrollment in the district does decline, this, this $25,000 per pupil funding very much mitigates uh, that revenue reduction that's driven by the enrollment reduction. So just to jump to the projected revenue um, gap at this point, the projected revenue shortfall, that number right now is $40 million. And to put it in perspective, our first year, uh, my first year upon being pointed, uh, that number was closer to $70 million, between 70 and 75. I can't remember the exact number, but it was uh, at least $70 million. And so $40 million, significant improvement since that time. It's slightly lower than what we um, were talking about at this point last year. Uh, and so in terms of how we uh, uh, extract these savings in order to balance our budget, it is a mix between central office savings and school-based savings. And as we always do, we start with central office non-personnel uh, expenditure reductions. Then we look at central office personnel before we look at school level cuts. And so non-personnel reductions will certainly look to the extent possible um, uh, what cuts we can make. And right now we're projecting roughly eight and a half, nine million dollars in non-personnel cuts. And then the rest would be personnel there at 6.6 .6 million. And then at the school level, there is not as much non-personnel expenditures that are um, uh, you know, most of school-based budgets are comprised of personnel. And so there's less non-personnel to cut there. And so what we projected is 4.2 million, and then the balance uh, is, is personnel. So I want to talk to you all about what that impact could be, because those are big numbers. And, and so the impact is very much dependent upon how much attrition we see. And so to the extent that there are a high number of retirements and resignations, a higher than projected number, I should say, of retirements and resignations, um, that's the high attrition uh, scenario here. You're talking about a school-based impact of 50 staff members. Uh, and so if that number is lower than projected, that uh, the impact could be closer to 150. And so right there in the middle is roughly 100. And this covers all positions at a school level. And so I know this is the question we get most often, what's going to happen with teacher layoffs and other school-based staff layoffs? And these, these are the ranges that we are currently contemplating given the budget that we shared. And again, so much is dependent upon those personnel notifications because if a teacher in a non-high need staffing area resigns, then we can just simply close that vacancy uh, or at the end of the year, we can just you know, eliminate that position and no person is therefore impacted. What I'll say is this year's budget is moderately better than last year's budget. <clears throat> and, and so last year's budget, not a single tenure teacher uh, was rift. We had non-renewal of non-tenure teachers, uh, mostly for performance reasons. And for other people who were impacted, mostly for performance reasons. Um, and so I anticipate this year's process that will play out later in May to be very similar where I don't anticipate a large number of uh, individuals who are performing at a high level uh, would be impacted in a reverse seniority fashion through a RIF. That is not something that we envision. It could happen, especially in a low attrition scenario. So I don't want to remove that possibility. But again, this year's budget is moderately better than last year's budget, which at the end of the day, while there was some impact, it was not a significant impact and was mostly driven by performance. So as we talk about revenue shortfalls and adjustments we have to make, that doesn't preclude us from also making investments. And so I want to just spend a quick minute talking about investments. And with 85 to 90% of our 
uh, revenue going toward personnel. When we say investments, we're talking about personnel investments. So I just want to acknowledge that cognitive dissonance of, on the one hand, we have some personnel reductions, and on the other hand, we're making new investments in personnel and hiring new positions. But I just want to call out both things can be true, where we are overstaffed in certain areas and understaffed in other areas. We have new priorities that arise, and we need to invest in those priorities. And so just to call out those priorities, we want to better support our students' social and emotional learning needs by creating a new position that is a culture and climate focused coordinator position. So if you think about at our two comprehensive high schools, we have a dean of culture and climate. The idea here is for our family schools to have a similar position that supports our students and helps train and build capacity, train teachers and help build capacity within a school to lead restorative practices with students, help reduce suspension rates as we discussed earlier, to provide trauma-informed care support to staff. Uh, and so that position is one that we fully anticipate to hire locally. And I do believe that our school security officers would be terrific fits for this position. So this is a position where um, we want to think about those school security officers and other school-based staff who have wonderful relationships with students, with parents, with community members, uh, who want to work even more closely with our students. One way to think about this is right now, in too many classrooms in Camden and really throughout the country, when a student is acting out, sometimes the knee-jerk reaction of a teacher is to call the school security officer. And so for those students that have behavioral challenges, um, potentially they're special ed students, they interact so often with someone in uniform. And in more extreme cases, by the way, police are notified and called into a classroom. And so we don't want those students' experience to always be uh, with someone in uniform and a person of the law. Uh, instead, we want those very skilled, local Camden staff to be supporting our students, not in uniform, through different methods, through different practices. And so that is the direction we're moving in here. That is not to say we won't have school security officers. We will have school security officers in all of our schools. But it is to say we want to provide additional supports for our student social emotional learning needs. And then really quickly, there's also a new position that's called the, behave, the Applied Behavioral Analyst, which is really another way of saying uh, we want to bring uh, someone in with a pedagogical background who is working very closely with teachers to build their capacity to be able uh, to address these very kind of social emotional learning needs inside of a classroom. So um, slightly different in terms of the support they would provide a school than the coordinator of culture and climate, but very much toward the same end. Um, at Woodrow Wilson and really across the district, we do also want to make some additional investments in bilingual education. And so calling out Woodrow Wilson here specifically um, for some additional placements. So that's a new investment. Um, we want to continue to monitor uh, our kids and their access to music, art, computer, and foreign language, and so we're making some additional investments there. Foreign language was one that came up earlier, uh, and some of the course offerings that right now we are providing through Ed Options, an online uh, program, we, can, we will be moving forward with a, a traditional classroom setup next year. And look, we're going to maintain class sizes and ratios. We're not going to go over any state limits uh, or state um, caps. And uh, we're, we're very much monitoring uh, those class sizes. I know that is something that's very important to families. So that's it for me. I'm now going to welcome up uh, Karen Willis, our school business administrator, to, and I've, given we have a small audience here, we'll, we'll kind of quickly give you some of the highlights on the operating budget itself. And certainly we'll take any questions. And uh, I assume some number of people are signed up for public commentary as well. Good evening and thank you, Paymon. Um, when you came in this evening, you should have been able to gather the advertised budget that was submitted to the county for approval this evening. So hopefully you have a copy of that in front of you. Um, also, I would like to, if you would, on this presentation, if you would take note of the columns which are labeled um, difference versus adjusted budget from the previous school year. The majority of these changes will be um, seen this, this evening based on what the superintendent just said previously, that are realigning our resources for the budget and also the changing in enrollment. 
So with that being said, I'd like to start the presentation and just talk about those areas that which are I highlighted in yellow to bring to your attention. So the regular programs under instruction, as you will see in the difference co um, column, it's down by $889,000. This is mainly due from um, non-personnel reductions, including supplies and prof prof professional um, services that the district uh, provided this school year. This does not affect any changes in Fund 15, which is school-based budget allocations. The next two columns that I would like to bring to your attention is before and after school programs and the summer programs. The district is continuing with these services. However, the ex expenditures for this, um, these two services, before and after, and the summer school program are now gonna be covered under grant funding. Next, continuing on with the operating budget is undistributed expenditures that I would like to bring to your attention. This budget um, column category is actually increasing from the um, prior school year. And this is uh, based on the displaced students that are in our district right now. So that would be, an example of that would be either uh, Gateway, if you're familiar with that, that the district uses that services now with Camden County Colleges, and also with Camelot. So those increased costs are being recognized in this uh, column from the pre previous school year. The two other subject matters that I'd like to bring to your attention this evening is un others um, supervised services for students, right? Funding in this category is shifts from Fund 11, which is central office, to Fund 15. We're trying to give back more allocations to, at the school level so the schools can decide for themselves specifically the different types of programs that they would like for this under this category. Um, the next one that I'd like to bring to your attention is improve of instructional services. The district is continuing improving instructional services for the upcoming school year as we did this prior school year, such as with the superintendent brought to your attention in a literacy access program that Ms. McCone spoke about in her presentation. We're continuing on with that, and that's where this is um, captured under this category. Can you move on? Uh, did I? I want Go back, media, yes. Media services, which is down by $2.6 million for this school year. However, again, this is due to reallocation of fundings that are going out back out to the schools, as, as you see with Woodrow Wilson this current school year, and we're continuing growing in that area across the board with digital materials that the district is going to be purchasing for the upcoming school year. So that funding is now being at the school level on the Fund 15 and in Fund 20, which are grants, and that will be now covered under Title I and Title II expenditures. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Okay. Support services for general administration. This school year, we had more revenue in which we did the previous school year, which enabled us to invest more for contingencies such as um, we cushioned against the district purchase a new budgetary human resource uh, platform, which is known as SunGuard. So we had much more money this school year than we will do this next school year because it was a one-time purchase and we'll be flattened out for this school, the upcoming school year in 17-18. Operations and maintenance and plant services, this direct result of a reduction is due to reduction of facilities and reduction in personnel. Where you will see a difference is student transportation. This is an increase of $1.9 million, mainly driven by the change in enrollment, which we spoke about earlier, and due to universal enrollment. So this cost continually to increase for the district since it was last year and this year. You'll see it was 11.2 years 11.2 million dollars this year and now it's 13.1 this this coming school year and it as we continue to grow in the district the price may continue to go up um, personnel services for employee benefits again this is due to moving we shift from fund 11 which is a search on office and we move that out to Fund 15 at the school base because that's exactly where the employees are at and that's where the charge should be at the school base level. Uh, overall, this um, 
this category has decreased over time for um, benefits. Facilities, facilities and acquisitions and construction services actually went down by $466,000. And this is due to the realignment of the long range facility plan and the impending approval for SDA fundings for different projects that, that are required that, that needs to get taken care of at the district, at different school levels. Charter Renaissance schools. As highlighted by the superintendent, an increase of $11.6 million prior from versus the prior school year. This is due to the enrollment and school choice. This is a projection and it can change and depend on as um, maybe because of Camden Community School, it depends on where those children may go if they close. So that number, it may change over time. Overall, the general fund for school base, as you see at the bottom, where it says this current school year coming up, we're at $81 million. Prior school year, we're at $86 million. So there's a decrease of $5.2 million. And this is based on the reallocation of funds and resources. We moved from Fund 11 to Fund, to fund 15, and we consolidated services also at the school levels. Um, I, I did not highlight the top word where it says general fund. Um, the total for this school year was at $304 million, 210 versus the expiring school year at $321 million. This is a roll up of what you just saw of all the expenditures at the, for general operations of the budget. And so there's a decrease of the 16 million. And again, this is due to um, the change of enrollment and reallocation of the, our, our resources overall in the district. The next category I'd like to bring to your attention is preschool ed aid. Um, this is, it, although it has decreased by $3 million, it's basically because of the prior year roll up, rollover that we did not receive like we did the pr previous year. And that's based on calendar year exposure and the number of children that we have. But if you look at the overall, it's, it's basically a flat change in the preschool aid. Okay, these are all federal resource fundings for non-public schools as a pass-through. So all this money that, the, that you're seeing up here actually goes back out to the non-public schools in different categories. The same here, our federal funding for Title, and I'm sorry, I want to go back one. You see Title I at the bottom of this page, and it goes on to Title II, III, and IDA funding. This is, all, again, resources that we receive from the federal government from the last year and this year. Overall, our federal resources are also going down because we have to follow a strict guideline by the federal government. And this year, we had to allocate 80% of what we received last year. Prior year was 85%. Oh, out of school district placement, including special ed. This increase over the prior school year is based on increased cost of services in each one of these levels. Um, as you can see, um, the private school for the handicap went up significantly uh, by $2 million. Prior school year was $8 million three, and now we're at $10 million three for this upcoming school year. And the, basically, like I said before, it's due to increased cost of services. Uh, for, I spoke about transportation. This is the breakdown of it, uh, where we have aid and lieu for children that are in private school that we have to fund out to them to have transportation provided to them. But the contracting services that we now use, um, Camden County Education Commission services, the cost is continually going up. Last year it was 11.2, this year is $13.8 million. Again, this is just um, services that are being provided at the district. This is flat from what we had last year. That, so there's not really a big change there. Overall, this is what we received from the state, and it's flat. It was flat last year at $280 million, and it is again flat again from the state at $280 million. 
And I'm just reiterating again, we went over this before, but this is the allocations that we're receiving from, um, our, from the federal government in regards to our grant funding, broken down. And the same with the non-public aid and the preschool aid. It's just a reiteration of the previous uh, slide that I went over with you before. So the total net appropriations, which equals the total net revenue this year is $352 million, $334,050, whereas last year we were at $372 million, 551, a total reduction of $20 million overall. So as the superintendent indicated, this is a moderate decrease on what we, I was hoping that we got a flat um, from, flat aid from the state, and we did. So we were able to achieve some of the goals that are a priority for the superintendent moving forward for the year 2017-18 school year. Do you have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much as flat as opposed to what it was last year and this year, but I can give you the exact figures and I have your email address, I can send that to you. Um, but it's pretty much a flat, but it will be covered under our grant, grant funding. Anyone else? We got, we got to go way back, right? Yeah. So what was the question, Josh? Correct. And, and so when we say low, medium, high, it's relative to uh, historical figures. So relative to what we're projecting, which is based on historical figures. I don't know those figures off the top of my head. You can assume that in most school districts every year, something like 10, 15% of their teachers turn over. And so most of that has to do with retirement, some are just resignations, and then there are also some that are performance-based. So maybe someone was tenure charged, someone was non-renewed. So that's what that refers to, that though that turnover creates vacant positions. So that turnover may happen right at the last day of the school year, right? So June 30th. So then that position starting next school year, we can just close it out and save the funds and not actually have to remove someone from their position in a uh, reverse seniority fashion, which is how RIFs are done for teachers throughout the state of New Jersey. And so the last two years, because of careful planning, I believe, we didn't have to actually do a RIF for tenure teachers, for teachers. And so this is just, if, if, the, if that turnover, if that attrition is higher than what we're currently anticipating, which is possible, uh, because this, there's not an exact science, you don't know, I mean, a lot of teachers come up to me all the time, like, I've got 26 years, I'm 57 years old, like, I still love what I do, and, they may change their mind by the end of the year and decide they're going to resign, and that has a budget impact. So, pay my, no, matter where, no matter how the attrition goes, whether high or low, uh, the budget is already. So, no matter how, no matter which way we go with the attrition, whether it's high or low, we've still made allocations within the budget to secure us for whatever is going to project, whatever this projecting is going to project. Correct. Correct. We just, we just have to potentially lay off more people than we would like if it is on the low end. Uh, but the budget is the budget. We are going to make those investments. Another way to think about this is, so last year's numbers came in around 150. And so I'm saying that's the worst case scenario. And this year, last year was to 150 and what actually? It was, it was approximately 150 total school-based staff. And if, if I have that wrong, you guys should jump in here. It was, it was around that number. And I'm, I'm telling you that that's, at this point, the worst case scenario. I have one last question on the preschool aid. Um, what, uh, there was a decrease? What pre type of things will be impacted? Was flat, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. There was a slight decrease in the preschool aid, and that's basically because of the carryover was less than what it was the previous school year. 
Right, yes, but not. But the, yes, the allocation from the state was flat. But now but it that was we have a decrease, what I'm sure that that impacted something in the schools. Like, what is going to be impacted because of that decrease? I um I d we talked about this the other day too, but um it's I can't remember right now. So to get it more accurate to you, I will get that back to you. Okay, thanks. The changes in that, yes, ma'am. The ones that we yeah, there's nothing's changed there. Yeah. There's a mix of private funding. Right, private funding. They still go through. Yeah. So as the, from the point of view of the preschools, the district has reported an enrollment of like 96%, which I believe were all district um, managed schools. Let's call it that. Uh, is there any of the preschools that is be, are being turned over to the Renaissance partners? Hmm? So not sure if I need to stand on the microphone to talk to you right here, sorry. Yeah. But uh, so KIPP, for example, partners with Center for Family Services to operate, kind of that, that's their partner pre-K program. So that's really the, uh, the one worth calling out, but the others we operate. So like for... Sorry, I'm just distinguishing some are actually district run and then others are private providers. But it's but it's but it's still district approved. Like we are the regulator, if you will, working with the State Department of Education. The trainer and the one responsible, Correct. basically. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't we're, we're not anticipating any any changes heading into next year from what you see today. No, nothing significant. But it's important from a measurability of kids going into the schools. That's mm -hmm. why I'm asking. Sure. So, yeah. I have a couple of questions about the uh, uh, operating budget on the line item that states unrestricted miscellaneous revenues. I see that it has. Uh, increased to uh, 13, approximately 13 million and change uh, from uh, the previous budget year of uh, about three and a half million. Uh, what was the reason for that increase in the unrestricted uh, miscellaneous revenues? On the operating budget, the first, the first uh, paragraph. No, right here. Unrestricted expenditures. Right. Mr. Kelly, you're looking at unexpe um, undistributed expenditures. Or uh, no, unrestricted, unrestricted miscellaneous sorry. revenues. It's on the budget category. The first. Uh, the first category, the sixth line item on the budget category, operating budget, the sixth line item. Oh, he's in revenue. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I see it. Oh, Ms. Kelly, so I need to get back to you on that one because okay. that's a... Now, would... Well, the question is, would... Uh, Revenue from other school districts, would that be included in that line item? It, it possibly could be, but I need to see it broken down so I can explain to you what exactly that is. I'll see that count code and I can get back to you. Okay. So All before right. this evening is over, can I get your information so I can call you? Sure. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, I would like a copy of the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation with the graphs. So if you could get that to me, I'll give you my email. And uh, I'd like a copy of that PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, we it, it pardon? It'll be online. It's online? It will be. It will, it will be. be. It will be online? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other uh, question that I have is, but I, like, I just noticed that there was no separate line item for revenue from other school districts. That's why 
I uh, uh, okay, speculated that it may be under that category. That category, yeah. And I believe you may be right, but I just want to make sure to confirm okay. it with you. All right. The other question that I have is regarding uh, uh, vocational education. Mm -hmm. That's under special grants on the second page, special grants and entitlements. Uh, the, for revised 2016 17, it's 115,000 and change. And then uh, below that, in the other category, there's another line item vocational education, which has the same number 115,000 and change. That's and just the, how, the, um, that's, yeah, that shows up like that in the donut in the state's um, website, because this right here was taken specifically from the state's website, and that's the way, but it actually it's the total of the two from vocational schools. Oh, the total of the two. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it is presented in the state's web, um, their program, and so that, uh -huh. when I had to print this off, it, it comes out like that. Okay. Uh, now... Is that mostly uh, salaries, or is that or just uh, uh, capital expenditures, or whatever? Is that? It's actually it's not it's not salaries. It's not salaries. No, okay. it's not salaries. It's okay. um, services for the for the schools that they go to. Okay. Okay, that's all the questions that I had uh, specifically. Okay, and I'll get your number for this before you leave this. Okay. Evening. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. She has questions. Uh, it was not listed in your special resources, and maybe it was pushed down to the school level, but if, I will ask the question about the library and media specialist. Is that something that's going to be funded for next year? With regard to the what was alluded to in the pre, what was referred to in the presentation on literacy access, those positions for media specialists will be, um, we will get those through the Here Three grant in combination with school-based youth services. So they won't show up in that line. Um, they will probably show up in another line. Yep. Fun twenty. back up on stage. All right, so since this is a uh, budget hearing, um, we are opening up to any member of the public that wants to make any comments. Um, you can make comments, state your objections, uh, make suggestions, ask questions. So um, this is your turn. There's no time limit for that. So is there any member of the public that would like to address the board or the superintendent? Uh, Ms. Jocelyn. I noticed that you're having a lot of um, efforts to try to manage the budget. And I saw in the resolution section that um, you were going to put in a travel maximum of a total of, it looks like, $63,000 of which um, uh, 32,000 would be, may, will be expended excluding federal funds. I didn't understand that particular resolution, which was over in here, but it relates to the budget. So, okay. sorry, hmm, it's in the wrong I place. Speak to that. I can speak to that. Every year um, we're mandated by the state that we have to put through a maximum travel um, resolution for the budget. That actually last year was at 90,000. Mm -hmm. And so we have to break out um, what would be covered under our general fund account as opposed to what would be provided under fund 20, which we will not know until the end of the school year. So that has decreased um, from the previous school year at 90,000 to this year at 63,000 um, with the traveling because we're trying to um, do less. We're doing more with the PD, but hopefully doing it more locally than going out. And I know that last year you had tried um, to have all of your uh, school trips set up very early in the school year. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's going to continue. Yes, absolutely. And that's also part of your 
budget management, I would yes, think. Yes, that's an internal control that we're trying to put, continue to keep in place mm -hmm. for this school year. Mm -hmm. If we get them in much earlier, we'll be able to hopefully control the cost more. So then, you know, the later you put them in, the more it'll cost us to okay. get those buses. Buses? Well, you said school trips. Oh, no, no, I meant the um, activities. There are school activities. Oh. They are trips, okay. okay. Yeah, they're buses, but there also are other expenses associated yes. with them. So. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Ms. Chosman. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to address the board on the budget? Uh, Mr. Kelly Francis? Yes, there was one other question that I had that I didn't uh, think about when I was speaking. Uh, with regard to uh, the transportation for our students, our Canvas students, to the uh, two vocational schools, uh, is the district responsible for the transportation costs or does the vocational schools, are they responsible for the okay. transportation costs for our students to their campuses? Who pays for that? Vocational school? Is that what you asked? The, yes. Yes, sir. The district is responsible for that. Okay. So? Yeah, the sending district. No, okay. but we do not compensate them with tuition costs. Is that? We, yes, we do that also. The tuition is free. Yes. No, we no. pay for the tuition. We, still, we pay for that also. It's a pass through. The money comes through us to the vocational schools. The yeah, could you t tell me what that line item would be? It's under uh, tuition. To the uh, vocational schools? And it should have a list of all the schools, too. How much they get monthly? It's on the monthly huh? reports as well. It's not on here. I, I, I notice it's not on. It's a, that account code is not on here because um, I know it by heart. But um, I can look that up for you and provide that too. But we do pay for that. Yeah. The district pays for that also. Tuition and transportation costs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, because I, I didn't see a line item. It's not on here. You're absolutely right. But again, this was extrapolated from the, the state's website. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any other person that would like to address the board or the superintendent on tonight's budget? Any board members have want to address the superintendent or the business administrator regarding the budget? Yeah, I do have one question. The um, mm -hmm. part about the employee benefits that's mm -hmm. pushed down to the school level budget. Yes. Like, can you? Can you elaborate more on that? Sure, because the way we're structured here in, in the city of Camden, we have um, the general fund for central office and we also have school-based budget. So when we allocate the salaries at the schools, when we, and when we set up a budget at the schools, we also have to allocate the benefits at that school level. So that's before last year, it, um, it was done on the central, level, central office level and it should not have been. Those who work at the school district, the, that allocation should follow that individual. So that's when we move those fundings over to, so you'll, that's why you kind of see that, the difference, like it, it, um, whereas that school budget last year did not take in considerate, consideration of, that, of the benefits cost. So does that mean that some schools, will, some personnel at different schools get different types of benefits? Is, is it, no, no, it's just, the, no same. It's the benefits are the same across the board. They all offer the same, the benefits, right? Okay. But it was just allocated at um, Fund 11 at the central office where it should not have been. Okay. I think it varies on like the school participation. So one school might have more after school activities, hence they might need more professionals for after school. So they would idealistically know how much they need money set aside rather than the district managing that and not doing it appropriately because they're not at the school level and they don't really, you know? So I think that's where, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. where it makes, where it, makes where, which is why we're moving the budget now back to the school level. Right, exactly. Because they're more, you know. Okay. I had two questions. Uh, I'm just gonna ask both of them um, so I don't forget them. Uh, the first one is, um, It's regarding trips, but it's regarding the special trips that our schools um, have been taking within regards to their, um, as it relates to their curriculum, mm -hmm. like the creative arts band, um, you know, the French classes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, are we, is, are, we do, are we incorporating those into the budget for this upcoming year? Um, you know, how does support from the district 
what does support from the district look like to to the school? Sure, we are giving the school. Um, we're giving more support to creative arts because we recognize that with uh, Camden High School and Woodrow Wilson, they have their athletics department. They have a separate budget, and so for years this has been a conversation. Whereas creative arts has not had a separate budget for their band, so we are coming alongside of them and assisting them when they want to travel, we need to know, it needs to be budgeted so that we can have those conversations, how much, is, you know, what exactly what that expenditure is that we would have to put out for that upcoming school year, yes. So, and then my second question, which would tie into this is, um, what mechanisms are we putting in place to be able to train the administration at the school levels about the budget, the process, how to look at a budget, exactly. how to, um, explain a budget to your employees, mm -hmm. um, how to read a budget, um, and, you know, is it too late to, um, I feel like there's still a little bit of issues on the school level regarding mm -hmm. travel and budget, et cetera. Right. So, it, you know, is it too late to continue having those conversations with schools to making sure that next year that, you know, the schools are funded properly to be right. able to not have any hiccups in the well, process? Sure, it's never too late, um, it's a good question. Um, we're actually meeting with the schools starting in April to go over their budgets with them so that we can have a smoother transition of closing out for this current school year. We're going to continue to meet, uh, my staff has met with the FOCs and the OMs to continue to educate them. If it means we have to bring them in as a group or we do one-on-ones sessions with them, we do that on a continual basis with them and we'll continue to do so. Also, also to Madam Vice President, by May. Will it be a breakdown for the um, parents and the residents of the city of Camden who may not understand this budget conversation, <laughs> but to, well. in layman's term, to be able to express that if we can break this down in layman's term to get our parents and students to really understand what this is somewhat all about, you know, to give them a start. Right. So when you, we all are making certain moves um, financially, they will be able to understand. And I think it would trickle down even into the household <clears throat> that we are trying to teach, you know, financial literacy, and all of these type of things that we want to accomplish. I think it would be helpful. Sure. You know, I, I, and I'm, I'm just saying, I'm listening. It is late hour, so it's kind of hard for me to even comprehend. <laughs> but nevertheless, for those parents who are watching, exactly. for the community right. whom we represent, that if we can, break some talking points down to sure. make the layman's turn, I think that would be uh, most helpful for the community. Just a suggestion. Yeah. No, All I right. think it's a great suggestion. I've not done it before, but we can do it. Most definitely. Yeah, we, we, yeah we've talked about, and I think we even have a draft of this, but just like a basic like budget 101, here's right. how it works. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we've got our work cut out to flesh that out and to pull something together. So Better appreciate the suggestion. Need, uh, that's mm -hmm. a great idea. Better need our help. All right, that ends the public session for oh, the board session for the budget yeah. hearing. Um, oh, we have one more, one more question. question. Oh, sorry, one more, Ms. Jocelyn. Um, I see that you have Teach for America um, teachers, right? I, I only know that because you have a, somebody who's doing a survey on it, okay? How many are there, and, and is that a separate budget item, two. okay? Two. two. You have two, okay, two. so is that, is that something that comes along as part of your planning or? Teach for America always reaches out to us to see what our appetite is to take on more core members as they call them. And you know, for us, we've let them know that in high need staffing areas, namely high school math and science, um, we're, we're having a very difficult time as most school districts are finding certified teachers we would take in Teach for America teachers. Mm -hmm. And they have very few <laughs> of yeah, those. Yeah, well, of those certified teachers, so uh, hence the number two. Okay, and, and then the uh, question, I know you've been spending a lot of time and effort in the last couple of years on curriculum development. I don't know where exactly that cost is rolled in here. Is it continuing to be at the high rate? I know you're gonna be putting in your world language and your technology and there are some other things. I didn't know if that was a flat effort of the budget. It's actually in the instructional piece that we, I went over earlier. Um, oh, it's it, in it's, the instructional? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, any other questions? Okay, any more? Okay. Um, 
statements for the budget? No? All right. I'm going to make a motion. Um, motion to adjourn the meeting. So at this time, I call for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And second. may I have a second? Okay, may I have roll call? Ms. Dorothy Burley? Yes. We'll Mr. Joshua you. Cole? Yes. Ms. Taisha Manier? Yes. Mr. Wasim Mohammed? Yes. And Ms. Felicia Reyes? Yes, ma'am. And at this time, the meeting has, is adjourned.